Hey everyone, this is Steve from Publish Press, and if you want to improve your WordPress publishing, you should get the Publish Press plugins. In this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your WordPress publishing with more advanced tables. This is possible with the advanced table block in the Gutenberg editor. You can see some examples in front of us here. We've added colors to different cells of this table. We've added a custom header and also a striped design to this particular table down below. Both of these are examples of the advanced table block that you can get with the Publish Press Blocks plugin. This is free to download from WordPress.org. So if you want to follow along with what I'm doing in this video, you can head over to WordPress.org, grab a copy, and install it for free on your site. I have a demo site set up with Publish Press Blocks installed. You can see it in the left admin menu here. Once it's installed, you can start using it straight away. In fact, I have a couple of demos already set up. If I edit this advanced tables post, you can see a couple of solid examples of how this block works. This particular table is the same one that we saw a few moments ago in this video. It's a three column table. And in the center, each of these cells has a different color. And we also have a striped table that has a colored header. In the right side, you can see all of the advanced settings for this block. There are probably about four times as many settings and options as you get with the default table block in WordPress. So you've seen how they look in your admin area. Let's create a new one. I'm going to go to the post screen and click add new. And this will be my post with a new table. I'm going to click on the plus icon here and advanced table is visible. If you don't see it immediately, you can always search for it. There we go, advanced table. Your first choice will be to decide how many columns and rows you want. If you don't know, don't worry, you can always add more columns and rows later. Click create and you can see the outline of your table is waiting for you. This is the default view. On the right sidebar, you can change this to a striped view if you want. We did choose a three column and three row table when we first set up this block. If you change your mind, the way to do it is to select a place in the table and you can use this edit table option here. You can add a row before, or you can add a row after. You can delete a row. You can do all the normal things you would expect to do when manipulating a table. In the right side, you have some extra settings. You can choose the width of the table. I would generally recommend leaving this to 100%, but you can make the table smaller if need be. You can decide whether the actual table cells themselves are a fixed width or whether they're going to adapt to the content. You can add a table header and a table footer as well. And you can decide whether there's a border around the cells. Let's start to put this table to some use. I'm going to use this to enter some movies. So I'm going to have movie title as one of the headers. And you can see that the cell is growing to make room for the content. This is going to be a little bit confusing. So I generally recommend that you do enable fixed width table cells, at least to get started. And that way, all the columns are going to be a regular width when you're entering your content. Our third column is going to be release year. Okay, I'm going to add some movies. We'll have Titanic. We'll have Toy Story. How about Die Hard? And maybe Caddyshack as well. So we've got a wide range of movies here. Okay, uh, forgive me if these genres are not entirely accurate. They're gonna be close enough. 
And when it comes to the release year, Titanic was released in 1997. Toy Story was released in 1995. Die Hard was 1988. And Caddyshack was 1980. So looking at this, I don't think we necessarily need the footer. We could have movie title, genre, and release year in there, particularly if it's going to be a long table. But I'm going to disable the table footer here. You can add some style to your header. I'm going to make these table headings bold. And let me scroll down a little. You'll see that it's possible to set a color for individual cells. For example, I have release year highlighted here. We now have a red background for that cell. And inside here, you can also change the text color as well. If I have a light text color, that's going to stand out pretty well against the slightly darker background. And you can also control the border as well. Again, I'm doing this just for this one cell, but if you want to, you can set the border width for this cell and you can set the border style as well. Is it the right side? Is it the bottom? Is it the left side? And is it solid, dashed, or dotted? So for this cell, I'm going to have a solid border and it's going to be a couple of pixels. I'll go to the other header. Genre is going to have a solid border, and that's going to be two pixels. And the third of our headers. Okay, there we go, we've got them consistent. And I'll make sure to save my work again. And it is possible to change the color of the border as well. I'm just gonna make sure to set it all to black. Down here, you can control the padding for the cell. If I increase the top padding, this is going to increase the distance between the text and the top of the cell. If I increase the left padding, that's going to increase the distance between the title and the left side. And also down at the bottom, you can control the text alignment as well. For the header, I think it might be good to have these centered. So let me publish my table and see what it looks like on the front of the site. There we go. We have an advanced table published on my site. One thing I might do is go back and add a little border to each of these table cells, but otherwise, this is definitely an upgrade over the basic table block you're going to find in the Gutenberg editor. Not only are these tables easy to use and full of features, but they're also mobile friendly as well. We're on the Publish Press demo site here, and I'm going to use one of the features in Chrome to quickly move to a mobile view. And this is what it might look like on a phone. As I scroll down, I can see that my tables still work perfectly. They adjust nicely to the very narrow size of the screen. And there is a setting as well that will add a scroll bar if you do have a really, really long table that just won't fit on your screen. You can find that in the Publish Press documentation on publishpress.com. You can also add an anchor to allow people to quickly jump to your table. It really is a flexible upgrade over the basic table block in WordPress, and you can get it for free. If you install Publish Press blocks from wordpress.org, it really will help upgrade your publishing features on your WordPress site. 